in the last video, we talked about the tee box and selecting a target in which you're trying to aim at or get the ball to start towards or whatever it may be and how to select such target, right? I'm sitting here in the fairway now and it's really having your expectations managed as well because if you have a driver in your hand, we're probably looking at a dispersion of 50, 60 yards, maybe more depending on who you are, which is totally fine, all right? I'd have to look up the numbers on the PGA Tour, but if I gave 100 drives to somebody and I said, all right, just hit them, and your left shot versus your right shot is going to be pretty wide. And it's knowing that you're not going to hit it perfectly down the middle every time. So if you can take that circle of golf balls and remove the balls, and then you have your circle, all right, if I move it over here, statistically, what gives me the best chance to get the ball to be in play? For me, it was aiming at the trees that are right behind me, and that gave me the best opportunity to put the ball in play. I could miss it right. I got about 40 yards to miss it right. I have 20 yards to miss it left, so I had plenty of room to fit my circle in there. Now we're going to the green. I'm 184 yards away, and the same thing applies. The pin is currently in the front part of the green, tucked a little to the right, and I need to think about, all right, if I have an eight iron or a seven iron in my hand, we are downhill, so this is probably playing more like 175. For me, an eight iron maxes out at 170. Sure, I could swing harder, but again, if I was to hit 108 irons, my left to right dispersion would be tighter, maybe 30 yards, maybe less. But what about my front to back? Do I have to hit it perfect to get it to go 170? Yes. Is it worth leaving it short on this hole? No. Most players on the PJ Tour who are very successful end up pin high more often than not. So we're going to drop the 8-iron because I know if I was to hit 100 shots, I can't get it to that pin every time. Sure, I get lucky, and it's not like I'm trying to hit it close anyways. I'm going to hit my shot and let my dispersion dictate where the ball goes. So I'm going to hit a 7-iron, and I'm 184. So if I took... This is from the Decade Golf System, which I just started, and I love it already. I haven't gotten a quarter of the way through, but it helps you really pick out targets. And with 184 yards, my number is roughly nine. And when I say that, I mean I have to aim somewhere nine yards from the edge of the green. No matter where that pin is, it has to be nine yards at least. So I'm 184. I got to aim nine yards. That pin looks to be probably six yards from the end of the green or the side of the green so i'm aiming three yards left of the pin that gives me a total of nine so three yards left of the pin is roughly center of the green there's like these little trees right behind the middle of the green there that you might not be able to see but we're roughly three yards left and i'm just going to pick a point right at that and i know dispersion wise my circle would fit pretty well on that green right at those trees and it looks to be about 20 feet left of the pin which is perfect right i got a birdie chance now on this hole and statistically speaking this is the hardest hole in the golf course or one of them so to have a birdie opportunity we're in good shape let's go down and check out the putt so here's just another look and you'll see the front part of this green narrows up pretty much to we'll pace it off but the front part of this green is fairly narrow. And with a seven iron, we're probably looking 30 yards, give or take. So if I go one, two. Good look at the uh, nature right there. So the front of this green is roughly 15 yards. The back part of this green is much wider. So if I took my circle per se and moved it all the way back to here, all right, that's the point in which I want to try to hit this ball. I don't care if I'm 30 feet past the pin because in reality, if I miss hit it, it puts me where this ball is. If I was aiming to go back there because a full seven iron for me goes 180. I hit it perfect, it goes 180. It's playing downhill, 175. So if the center of my circle was kind of a little bit above this hill right here, somewhere in that ballpark, all right, 
I missed it maybe slightly, but it put me right where I wanted to be. If I hit it well and it went 180, all right, I got 40 feet. My odds of making par are pretty good. Now let's try to make this putt. So through the decade system, we know, let's set you guys down right here, that managing our expectations are very important. And if I am, we're gonna face this off, but if I am, let's call this 10 feet from the cup. So I'm 10 feet from the cup, and the odds of making this putt on the PGA Tour is under 50%. So if I was to miss this, I'm still in good shape. Most of us would probably be mad that we missed a 10-footer, and we get off the green and go, man, I should have made it. Well, unfortunately, the odds are not in your favor, statistically speaking. So we focus on having correct speed, and from there, let's see if the hole gets in the way. So I'm gonna play this to be a fairly straight putt down the hill a little bit. And let's see if we can make it. We really wanna have good speed. Most of us can start the ball relatively close to the line that we're trying to pick. We just want the speed to be pretty good. So, good line, good speed. We made a nice birdie here. And that would lead us to a pretty big advantage if we were playing in a golf tournament on this golf course because this hole is hard. So, it's really understanding where to aim, how to select a target, understanding your dispersion, and you'll see yourself hit more greens and give yourself more birdie looks. Again, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment with any questions, and also give me further ideas of things that you want to learn, and we'll be sure to make a video. Thank you.